But sometimes the devil defeats people through their fears. I mean, know that through their fears. But you know, God, Jesus always would tell folks, fear not. Believe only. And it's going to be okay. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go and prepare a place. I don't believe that Jesus here was just telling us that he was, uh, you know, some people say, to prepare a mansion. He didn't say that. Though he talks about mansions, my father's house at many mansions. But he didn't really say, to prepare a mansion. He said, I go and prepare a place. Once he said there's a place by me, God, Jesus, when he went into before the throne of grace, he prepared a place for us, not a house, not a mansion, but a place in the altar of heaven. When Jesus went into the throne of grace, I saw Jesus in a long fast, high and lifted up. One of you sisters coming, you preachers, hold your hand up. Just preachers. I want to give you one of these. Jesus went into the heavens and prepared a place at the throne of grace that you and I boldly come to the throne of grace. You know, before Jesus, you couldn't do that. Did you know, if you went into the altar uh, of the temples, that Solomon made in the temples they had in the Bible days. You know God would kill you? Did you know nobody could go behind the veil but the high priest? God would kill him? Did you know that? When Jesus come, some of you may not know it. How many remember reading the Bible? Uh, the, 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 the Bible said the veil should be rent. A lot of people don't know what happened. The day Jesus was crucified, when they hung him on the cross, go back to history. The day that Jesus was crucified and he hung on the cross and about sundown, when he died, there was an earthquake. And a rock came down off of that. He was one mile. They carried him up an impossible mile at the top of that mountain. And the temple was just like that van sitting right at you, right in front of for the cross of Jesus and that mountain. And the temple's door, which was double doors, and the veil of the temple was right ahead of the, right up at the front of the church, where the, you know, the room where the preacher, the priest went in. There was a rock. You ever heard the, the rock came rolling down through Babylon, turned down the kingdom of this world? Well, the rock was rent, came down that mountain, rolling like a hundred miles an hour or more, hit the door of that temple and knocked him down, went in and ripped that temple, ripped that veil, yes. that no more do you got to go behind the veil. No more priests. You go yourself boldly. He ripped the veil. Jesus said the veil, when he was alive, shall be rent. Me and you can come direct to God. You ain't got to go through me. You ain't got to go through nobody else. God gave every believer that opportunity that you can come boldly before the throne and reach Jesus yourself. Preachers won't preach you this. You know why? They want you to lean on them. You need to lean on Him. He's your God. He hears your prayer. As much as my prayer, your prayer counts.
if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am you may be also. When Jesus went into heaven, he didn't go to prepare a mansion. This one, he prepared a place in heaven at the throne of grace for you, for me, that I can come to him, that you can come to him, that you boldly can come to him, that I boldly can come to him, that we all have that same respect. He don't respect me more than you. He don't respect you more than me. A little child can touch him. I said a little child can touch him. You can touch him. The place has been made for me. The place has been made for you. In heaven, the place has been made. You are God's child. If you're born again, a lot of preachers don't want the people to know that once you become born again, you're as much important as they are. See, preacher wants you always going through them. That way they, you know, they like that little hole in his handshake. Like, <laughs> None of y'all know what that hole in his handshake is. It's that $20 bill, that $100 bill that someone will just get shaking there, wad it up in the hand, they'll shake your hand, you know, and you... That's what the, the old timer called the wholeness handshake. Praise God. And, and, and sometimes people, preachers favor the folks that give them that wholeness handshake. But Jesus respected the little woman that didn't have but just a tiny little bit. And he looked at her and said, she has given more than these People that had these big checks. You know why? Because she gave her living. That was her daily food. That's what it took her daily to, to get her food for that day and maybe two or three days later. But she sacrificed it. Now I guarantee you when she did that Jesus, even though he might not have recognized her by name, but I guarantee you she got back home that like the widow that sustained Elijah, that meal barrel, or her place that she had her food. Praise God. I guarantee you, Jesus had put food in her, meal in her barrel. Thank the Lord. Meal in her barrel. There was a fly. One this morning, God, and I hit him. I said, I killed you, you little devil. I can't stand a fly. Boy, I got a fly swatter. I see one, and I... Slip up on me. I said, I killed you. Now you in hell, you little fella. Get out of here. I don't like flies. Man, they nasty. Thank you, Jesus. Prepare for where I and the where I go, you know, and the way you know. I know, and you know, that Jesus made it. He said, how do you know Jesus made it? Because when you come boldly to the throne of grace, you get through. You feel peace after you prayed. You feel confidence that what you prayed for, that, it, that it's happened. You got a peace. Jesus never lets you down. He never will let you down. He'll always be there for you. He'll always be there for me.
He said he owned a thousand cattle, a thousand hills. Because me being a farmer, I said, and all the taters under the hill. How many believe that? Do you believe that? You know, you got them taters under them hills. You know, you build that hill up, up plant them taters, and you, and it's in good ground. You know, you're gonna get some taters. My school teacher, uh, which was a, a pastor's wife, bless her heart, she tried her best to break me when I was up yonder. Um, uh, uh, when I was up here, here those are. Thank the Lord. God, from saying words like taters. And I, I said, you, you may make me in here, but I said, you ain't never going to change me. I said, the Lord is my Lord. He owns everything. And your prayers is going to count. Look, he said, Thomas said to him, Lord, we know not where you go, and how can we know the way? The way to God is through the door, and Jesus tells us in John 10, I'm the door. If any man climbs up any other way, he's a thief and a robber. You're the same as a thief and a robber. And he said, you know no robbers is going to get into the kingdom. He's not talking about going to heaven when you die. He's talking about getting in the kingdom when you come boldly to the throne of grace because Christ is the king and when he comes in you, the kingdom of God is with men. And the only way you can get into Christ, Jesus Christ, the kingdom is through the door and he said Thomas couldn't understand it Jesus said to him I am the way not ways the truth the life no man comes to the father but by me I feel so sad in my heart that all these religious churches you got you know it's good to know that America has all these churches but people ain't getting through to God people are not getting through to God because the preachers are not bringing them through the door we preachers, if we don't bring them through the door, we may have a congregation, but we're going to have a congregation that ain't going to know what to do when trouble comes. People are going to fall apart when trouble comes. We've got to bring souls. That's one thing we put an emphasis on. You get some of the, the uh, uh, CDs from Africa. We make it plain to these people that they, they don't have to go to the witch doctor. We make it plain to these people that they, they ain't got to go through or some preacher. We make it plain to these people that they just import it to God as the priest, no matter who he is. And probably more. Because the priest has done God his, his own doings and he tries to be God to the people and he ain't even in the kingdom himself. How can anybody that's not in the kingdom help you to get in the kingdom? It's so like a hitchhiker. He ain't going to help you out there hitchhiking. He's only going to call somebody maybe could carry one to pass you up. I don't like to hitchhike with hitchhikers. Because <laughs> I stand a better chance getting a ride by myself. And I've done a lot of hitchhiking in my time. And, and I know when I carry some preacher with me, we won't. But when I went by myself to preach on the street, I got rides. Especially when I showed that big old Bible I had, you know. Man, that Bible itself was like a stop sign. 
Can you imagine when I got saved, I didn't know what a Bible was? Except my mama's and I just couldn't read a stitch. I went in there and got bought me a Bible. And got my check on that next weekend. Went to that Bible bookstore and I wanted a Bible. And I asked mama, I said, what kind of gift? She said, King James. All the way up there, I said, King James, King James, King James. King James, King James, King James. But I, you know, <laughs> want to make sure. And he's already putting out new Bible. Mama said, all them other Bibles ain't no good. <laughs> so I said, when I said, what do you want? I said, I want a King James Bible. And they said, what kind? I said, I don't know. Just bring me the, the biggest one you got. <laughs> I thought the bigger you got, the more you got. I said, I want everything God ever said. And they brought me out a family Bible with them hard backs. Man, I come back, I was so proud of that Bible. I come back in, you know, that Bible. And I showed it to Mama. Mama looked at me, she said, Son, that's a family Bible. I said, You must be planning on having a big family. I said, That's where you keep your birth certificate. <laughs> Glory. But pretty quick, I got me a regular preacher's Bible, which was a, a hair tale, the best at that time. If you had known me, you should have known my father also. And from hereafter, you shall know him and have seen him. Isn't that good? See, they didn't know that Jesus was the Father. He told him, when you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Why well, say, show us the Father. But they, they didn't understand that. But after they got the Holy Ghost, they understood it. They understood that, that, that after they got the Holy Ghost, that God was in Christ, and that God is the Holy Ghost, that God is a Spirit, and they but one Spirit, because Jesus taught they one but one Spirit, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and they knew that, that there were no three persons, that Jesus was the, the fullness of God. That's what he taught. He said, God is in me, making me full of God, fullness of the Godhead. And if you come to the Father, and that's what these people out here got to know. They're not going to get saved if us preachers go out yonder and preach all this other stuff. They're not going to get saved. Like this. You got to come through the door. And when you come through the door, you get Jesus. Because now He is the one Spirit. Of course, His body is at the right hand of the throne of grace. Or the right hand uh, of the power. When, I, when the Lord took me to heaven, when I went to heaven, I saw this glory. And Jesus was sitting in the midst of it. And when I came and knelt before him, I, it was a glory. And now all that, that, it's just like gold, but it was so bright you could not look. And that glory was about him. And I bowed at his feet. And he told me, he said, you can have anything you want, anything you ask. He said, if you ask for a mansion, you can have a mansion. You ask to be rich. You can be rich. I said, Jesus, I want to be like you. I want a ministry. I've been fasted and went into death. I said, Jesus, I don't want these worthy things. I want to have a ministry to help people. I want to have a ministry like you. You said the works that I do, I can do them. And that's what I want. I want to be what you were in the earth. I want you there in me. You know what? Jesus took me by the hands. He put his, when he appeared to me as a lamb, he put his hands in mine, but he took me by the hands. And he said, as I am in this world, so are you. We are to be as he was. We are his representatives. We're not His... Uh, Jesus didn't come as our sympathizer. 
He's our mediator. You know what? We make make God and us preachers sympathizer. I tell people, don't come to me for sympathy. You don't go to Jesus. He ain't going to give you no sympathy. He's not your sympathizer. He's your redeemer. He's your healer. You ain't going to need no sympathy when He gets through with you. When He heals you, you ain't going to need no sympathy. You don't need, you know, sympathy moves people. Oh, I feel so sorry for you. Pity. Oh, you just cried. You know, I cannot help you. You got no heart. I ain't going to help you. You just both cry when you get through crying. You done brought on you what they had on them. <laughs> ain't what people want. You know, preachers want people to just to, uh, to bawl and squall. Man, God wants you. He wants you to be crying, but let them be tears of joy. Tears of mourning for souls. Weep for souls. Weep not for me, but weep for yourselves. That's what he said. Weep not for me, but weep for yourselves. Man, God is, is moved with, with compassion, with mercy. And if people out yonder will never get through this door, if we preachers don't give them the right kind of a message, we may get them in religion, we may get them in church, but we want to bring them into the kingdom. We won't bring them through the door when they get there. We want Christ in them. I'm going to get on down in a minute. If you had known me, you should have known my father also. He said unto him, I'm the way, the truth, and life. And no man comes to the Father but by me. But if you had known me, you should have known me, my Father also. And from hereafter you shall know him and have seen him. And then Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father. And it is enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been so long time with you? Yet you have not known me, Philip. He that has seen me has seen the Father. How say you then, show us the Father? Believe you not that I'm in the Father, and the Father in me. The words that I speak to you, I speak not of myself, but the Father dwelleth in me. He does work. If, if I can just get to the place, and if you can get to the place where the words that I speak, the words that you speak, you know, some people come out here like a, a broke-winded horse. You know, you don't put a broke-winded horse in a horse race. You don't hook a broke-winded horse, a mule, up to a plow. You may not like what I'm going to say. I, I, I hear these preachers guys, they get out here and they go like a, a bull. Think that's a, no, that ain't anointing. That's seven anointing. If you can't get up here and be calm and speak to people you ain't anointed you're just trying you got a self anointed get rid of that stuff get out there people Jesus the history says Jesus never lifted his voice Jesus spoke with an ordinary voice he didn't rage with, with juice coming out of each one of his mouth side of his mouth he didn't have snot, I mean, a uh, uh, flame, flame run out of his nose down on his face while he's preaching. Do you like it or not? God wants us. It's, tears is great. But Jesus, he was a man that could get up there, one of the greatest archers that the world, and if we are to be his spokesman. School teachers don't get nowhere hollered at folks. You don't learn nothing in school. And that's what we are. We are school teachers. We're teaching people how to come to Christ. All this whooping and a hollering and a yelling ain't getting nobody saved. All they're doing is working up a, a panic in the audience to get everybody a hollering with you. And ain't nobody know nothing when you get through. You say, but I just can't preach if I talk. Well, you ain't no preacher. You're just trying to be one. You missed your call. If you can't get up here and calmly with the anointing in your words, teach that word, then you ain't called no help. You just desire to be a preacher. You just trying to be a preacher. Or maybe it's a better way. 
Maybe you make more money preaching than you do if you had a job. This ain't for a job. God didn't call you because you didn't have a job. God said, let a man make his living by the sweat of his brow. <laughs> Didn't he? Well, I guess I played the thunder there. Well, not the home run, boy. Did you see that Holy Ghost running? <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory. Praise his name. Why are we not doing the works? We got to come through and do it through Him. Jesus said to him, Have I been so long time with you, yet you have not known me, Philip? See, Jesus showed Philip and the apostles that when they seen Him, believe you not that I'm in the Father, the Father in me, the words that I speak to you, I speak not of myself. But my Father dwelleth in me. He does the works. Believe me that believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works' sakes. Oh, if we can just have this Christ in us. You'll not be out here trying to do miracles. You won't be out here trying to make signs to follow you. Signs will just follow. Signs will just follow. Because all these here trying to make miracles and trying to make people well. And uh, all they're going to do when they leave your service, they're going to drift right on down. If there's another down the street, get in there and, and hope that preacher lays hand on them and tells them the same thing you did. And, and ain't nothing happening. And they're going to go to the next one. It ought to be when you pray for somebody that ends that disease. They shouldn't have to go to get somebody else. We preachers should have something that if they believe that with our faith, our faith makes them whole. Causes their faith to make them whole. You've got to let God pour something out of you. Uh, most preachers have learned to preach. That's the reason I didn't want to be a Baptist preacher. They had the hacks. And one of them and had the hacks. My brother was a Baptist preacher. I, I, I don't remember ever hearing him preach because I got a belly full of that growing up. Get up there and they read the Bible. You know, and they'd read the scriptures, and then they say, I tell you right now, uh, this old boy, he was just a sinner. I tell you right now, uh, oh God, this old boy was out there. He was a drunk. I'm going to tell you right now, this old boy was an alcoholic. I tell you right now. And that's all I heard. I thought to myself, <laughs> you come up in the Baptist, you know that. Hacking, hacking, hacking. That ain't more anointing than nothing. They all think they got it. Ah. Then they say, ah. Then and I've heard preachers in this ministry do that. Give them, ha, 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 ha. That ain't anointed. You know what that is? That's a self-anointing. You get offended, get offended. Go get yourself saved. Go get yourself, get in the call. To, get a call on your life. You ain't got no call. You're trying to make yourself a preacher. You can't make a preacher. God has to make a preacher. You quit trying to be a preacher. Let God be the preacher. Let God in you. Find who you are. Find your call. You've got no reward for that. You might get a reward helping some man of God. You know? Trying to copy the pastor. You ain't going to have no, you ain't gonna have no reward for that. Trying to copy me. You're not going to have no reward for that. If God's going to give reward, He'll pass it on to me because you're, 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 you're making a copy out of it. Get something. And the Bible can be preached by all anointings. Now, we're not all to get out here. And he called and struck. He's called to preach. God don't have two heads over a ministry. 
You ain't called. None of you are called to be me. You can't get out here and imitate me. Try to act like me. You preach the same gospel, but you're not the head. God don't have two heads on one cow. <laughs> two heads on one mule. And he sure don't have two heads on this mule. <laughs> but you know, we mess up. God's fixing to blow up. He's fixing to explode. There's a move coming, and God got to get us right. There's going to be a highway and a hedge of revival. There's going to be a revival in the streets. There's going to be a revival. Hospitals are going to empty out. Miracles are going to happen. But it ain't going to happen us running around here trying to be somebody else. Find who you are. The Bible said abide in the calling wherein you are called. You ain't called to be me. I ain't called to be you. You are called to be yourself. You sisters, don't try to be like Sister Annie to church. And I know she got women that are trying to be just like her, but you can't be her. Even Titus says is like him. <laughs> well, that's, it's the truth. I'm trying to help you. I'm not condemning you. I'm showing you. You ain't never going to work till you find who you are. God needs an army and He's going to have an army but they not every man let him let him abide in His calling God 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 and it's, didn't you say that abide in the calling find out pray Lord I don't know where I'm at I don't know what place I when He told me I was to be a preacher I said God I don't want that I'm an evangelist first thing I learned when I started preaching I thought I was a soul winner I didn't try to straighten churches out I didn't go in trying to t preach the pastors I didn't go in there and try to, if the pastors were wise and the church was half naked, I let him be responsible. I went in there and tried to get them saved. And a few times I wished I had blinds on my eyes. <laughs> Where some of them dress. But you know, having a clean mind, but you know, I wanted to say something. But I don't, God didn't call. I was an evangelist. Later on, God saw my heart. But you know when He told me I was a preacher's preacher? I argued with Him. I said, God, I'm not a preacher's preacher, and I don't want to be a preacher's preacher. Everybody, anybody, everybody ever told a lie on me, I told God that they that uh, was a preacher. Anybody ever done me dirty was a preacher. And probably <laughs> some of y'all. Get a good sister pastor, you think, and then bust your church. Try to go down three blocks, blow your church, and start another one. Ain't that right? Been all right if we were on the other side of town. It's pretty good stuff today. We're getting down to good stuff here. Believe me that I'm in the Father, Father in me, or else believe me for the very work, work's sake. Surely, truly, verily, I say to you, he that believes on me, the works that I do, shall he do. And greater works. I just would to God that we could... This is believers... These signs shall follow them. Go and preach the gospel. This is the gospel. Acts ain't the gospel. Romans ain't the gospel. First and second rent ain't the gospel. Pastors is supposed to teach that to the people on a on, on a probably a day service. And just teach it from the Bible. Don't add, don't say, this is my opinion. This is the way I see it. See it like God sees it. You know. Churches are dying right now. You wonder what's happened to the men and women in our day. It's because they're dying because pastors ain't taking. Paul was a pastor's pastor. You know, 
He, 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 he had many churches. He, the church at Rome, the church here, the church there. And he'd, he'd write uh, letters to them, uh, epistles to them. And he'd send them by carriers. And he said, let this be read in the church at Ephesus. When, when they had some problems over in churches. And they said, let this be read at the church at Corinth. You know. And when intermarriages and when, when, when some man would try to uh, take somebody else's wife, you know, he, he'd write. And he'd send a, a message and a straighten that out. And he'd say, let every man have his own wife. Don't be running around here with all these women. Sometimes he'd tell them, don't, don't just totally throw them away. But out of the church, but said, you know, don't give them no privileges. Let them prove themselves. He taught all this. See, that's what pastors are for. I don't have time to do all this out here. Unless I took a meeting somewhere, I may do some of it when I, if the Lord works it out down yonder to do some of this. Once a month, a few days. He said, well, it's too far for me. Well, I tell you, if you want to learn enough, I tell you, they set a, a goal they found in California. You, you'll go looking for the gold man. Wouldn't you? <laughs> Somebody said, I'm, uh, I'll show you where gold is. You'll be getting it, won't you? Well, this is the goal. The only way we're going to have a church without spot or blemish is how some pastors can take these scriptures and bring people in. Teach them. Just, just some sister getting saved, seeing some other sister that have sat under a, a good pastor that taught good modesty, trying to do it. She, she needs to be here herself, because a lot of times that won't last. You know, when, when temptation and trials and when folks begin to uh, criticize and run her down, she, 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 she's subject to go back to her old ways. Where is the works of the Father? You know, God's holding them back as a whole. And whatever you shall ask in my name, that will I do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father. He shall give you another comforter. Otherwise, He's going to give you that, that, that shield. He's going to send you forth with that anointing, that spirit to be with you in trouble and out of trouble, in and out of times. God is, I know we're on the verge. I know we're on the verge of the greatest move the greatest move that the world has ever had if you know you're called or if you want to do something for God come down here and stand in front of us today I was trying to get through some of this today because tomorrow we're going to have them anointings. And I want to get over in some anointings and service and maybe even uh, some fast or how to get through to God. I'm not fasting now, but I will be. I don't just fast just to be fasting. I try to be led. But let us all gather you know, you don't know. Some of you in your seats, you may one day be a preacher. You want to come up and pray this prayer with me, and then we'll ask Brother Taylor. He's going to lead us further. Appreciate Brother Taylor having me here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank the Lord. I believe I'll pray this a little different today, but I want you to put your hand across your heart and raise your other hand 
up to the heaven. I want you to I'll pray this prayer. I just feel it in my spirit. Oh God, I offer myself to you a living sacrifice, holy as I know how, that you may be able to use me. I offer my life as a sacrifice. Lord, I offer myself to take up the cross daily and to deny myself to follow you. Just help me in the spiritual part that the flesh will not war against the spirit, that the spirit will war the flesh down. Jesus, let this mind be in me that was in you and cleanse me from all my ways that don't please you. Help me to be a vessel honorable and suitable without spot without blemish search my heart search my spirit create in me a right spirit and a clean heart make my eyes single that no evil be in my eyes let my flesh be crucified with you that from here after that I will not sin and offer myself to you as a living sacrifice that I may be able to take up the cross I know as I lift my eyes that the fields are white but real labors are few God I want to be a real labor Jesus, I want to be your disciple. I want to follow you daily. I want to deny myself daily and follow you. Now raise your hands up and begin to cry out to God. Father, I ask you to bless these people. Help them. God, this has been my way, Lord. This has been is what has helped me. God, I'm glad that I'm little and glad that you brought me up the way I did, that I had to stay little. Lift, God, I lift you up. I bless them, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Lord, we thank you for this, Lord. God, we know this is the way. This is the truth. You are the truth. You are the life. God, we thank you for it today. Thank you, Jesus, for putting